Shalom. I'm Charles Elisha Williams with Yahweh Apostolic Ministries. Our mission is to bring the unadulterated gospel of truth to all nations as it was first preached to Israel on the day of Pentecost. We hope that you will discover some new truth in this video and that it will be a blessing to you. Afterwards, I'll be back with information on how you can contact us. Enjoy. What the Hebrew alphabet is. The Hebrew alphabet. Um, I'm going to do a slideshow on the computer for those who are in the sanctuary here. Uh, they see what I'm talking about on the computer. I wanted to put it in my PowerPoint, but the PowerPoint didn't want to be cooperative with me. Um, so we're going to do a slideshow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the slideshow and it's going to show each um, letter and it's going to pause. Now I'm going to say the letter and then I'm going to have you all say it right after me. Let me just move this off just a little bit here. Yeah, it'll be full screen but once I start with the uh, slide. Yeah, she'll, she has it also for the people on uh, live stream. It's in, in, this, in the PowerPoint on this live stream. Aleph. Aleph. Everybody just say it right after me, that's all. Bait. Baseball. <laughs> Gimel. Gimel. <laughs> Dalit. Dalit. Thankfully, pauses. Hey. Hey. Wa. Zayin. Zayin. Chet. Chet. Tet. Tet. Yud. Yud. That's the one we did last week, last time. Kaf. Kaf. That's the one we'll be doing this week. Lamed. Lamed. Mem. Mem. Noon. Noon. Sonic. Sonic. The picture goes along. Ayin. Ayin. The picture goes along with the uh, meaning of the word. Pay. Pay. The uh, alphabet. Saudi. Saudi. Hoof. Hoof. Raish. Raish. She. She. And Tav. Tav. Now with help, I'm going to uh, be going over that each time before I do our Hebrew alphabet, just to get it into our memory and, and it into uh, just to, just for us to to know that get to know the Hebrew alphabet. But that's what it's all about. If you go into the Hebrew alphabet, you you'll find a lot a lot of interesting stuff. My wife and I did a uh, looked at something last night on the internet. And with Yahweh's help, I'm going to either one of or both or one of one or one of us, I should say, is going to um, create some kind of PowerPoint or something to show you 
something that we came across last night that was very, very, very interesting um, about Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, which Pastor had mentioned earlier. Um, not taking away from what he was saying about Genesis 1, 1, but there was something, some other stuff that we noticed about Genesis 1, 1, very interesting stuff. Um, we're go you see, we're going to go over the Hebrew alphabet. Um, this is the second part of part uh, eight. Uh, last time we did Yud, and this time we will be doing Kaf. Uh, last time, we're just going to go over a, a review of what we did on the uh, last time for on Yud, uh, the tenth letter, and uh, just refresh us and to see, get us up to date on the uh, Yud and Kaf because the Yud and the Kaf, they go together. The Yud and the Kaf, well, all the letters all go together. Uh, the Yud and Kaf should have been done all in one message because they go together. And which is the reason why I have to review Yud to get into Kaf. We see Yud, we saw Yud in the Hebrew. Uh, there on on the uh, pictograph and the modern block Hebrew on the right. Uh, we learned that Yud in the Hebrew comes from the primitive root word Yad, which means hand. And Yad is spelled with a Yud and a Dalit. Okay? So it comes from the word Yad, Y-A-D. Okay, Yud and Dalit. If you don't have, can't get the information as um, going through it, just let me know after service, sister, and I'll, I'll give you the information. I'll give you all the information I have on it. Just in case I go a little too quick, because sometimes I'll speed up and too fast. Yud and the pictograph. The Yud and the pictograph means right hand. We saw that it meant open hand, or an arm, or a hand or work, or a deed. And now there it is again in the pictograph on the bottom. We also saw that you in the pictograph literally means the right hand power of Yahweh. And we uh, we got into uh, deep with that. Okay. The gematria, or what, what we call the gematria, or what the number of the Hebrew, see each letter in the Hebrew has a number attached to it. And the gematri, or the number, you'll hear me say gematri, but I mean number, is uh, for uh, Yud was 10. And that was very, very significant. Okay, what the meaning of 10? We saw a couple meanings, a few meanings. Deals with completeness. 10 deals with completeness. That happens in the divine order, or complete course of time. It means a cycle has completed, 0 through 9, and 10 is the outcome. You go from 0 to 9, you start all over it, with a 0 at the end, but a 1 in front of it. Okay, of course we all know that, we can all count to 10, and so on. And, and an example of that would be pregnancy. A woman who is pregnant has 9 months of pregnancy, and the 10th mark, 10th month, is the outcome, the child is born, and the, the birth, the life begins. It's an ordin, ordinal perfection. All numbers are based off the number 10. There was examples of uh, 10 in the scriptures. Okay, there was lots of them actually. There was 10 plagues and issued before the children of Israel left Egypt. Yahweh gave us 10 commandments. He could have gave us 11, could have gave us 9, but he gave us 10 commandments. Completeness. The 10th part shall be holy unto Yahweh, it says, in Leviticus 27.33. I mean, it, the 10th part. It's amazing, the 10th, a 10th, completeness. The completeness of Yahweh, the 10th. There are ten days of all 
from Tishri 1, the Feast of Trumpets, to Tishri 10. The Tishri is uh, the first, the, uh, a month of the Hebrew calendar, culminating in the Yom Kippur, which occurs on the 10th day of Tishri, in the 7th month, and we saw 7, we saw the significance of the number 7, as we did that letter also. There's ten generations from Adam to Noah, suggesting the, god, the godlessness of those generations was made complete. So that there was from Adam to Noah, there was ten generations of people. Now from Noah, there was ten generations from Noah to Ab, uh, Abraham, suggesting the godliness of these generations was made complete. We saw that there was ten clauses in the Lord's prayer. We saw that the anti Messiah controlled ten kingdoms on earth. Yahweh requires ten percent from all the people to be given back to him. Yahweh required ten genaries as a redemption money for the firstborn males, which is also called a half shekel. And that's in Exodus chapter 30, verse 13. There's ten tribes in the northern kingdom of Israel. Amazing how many tens there is in the, in the scriptures. The Passover lamb was selected on the tenth day of the first month. So we see that the Passover lamb, isn't that neat? The Passover lamb was selected on the tenth day of the first month. We saw that the Hebrew on the top... Uh, this is the uh, name of Yahweh in the, in the uh, Hebrew, although it's missing the first letter. And you see on the bottom, you see the uh, pictograph of, the le of his name. And there's the Yod that starts the name of Yahweh. And on the bottom, you see the pictograph of it. We learned what, what this means. We broke it down. Yud, okay, Yud, He, Wa, He. Okay, Yud means the right hand or power of Yahweh. That's the letter we did. Hey, which we did previously, was revelation or an open window. Uh, wa is the nail. And again, Hey is revelation or an open window. Yud, Hey, Wa, Hey. So what did it mean? Let's put it all together. There it is in the Hebrew, in the block of the uh, modern Hebrew. And it meant the right hand... It literally means the right hand power of Yahweh reaches through the open window and brings revelation of the nail that brings revelation to you and me. That's what it meant. Okay, so we did the review of Yud. Let's go on to the letter Kaf. Everybody say Kaf. Okay. The, the Kaf in the pictograph and the modern Hebrew there. You see it in the, the pictograph on the left. It kind of looks like a smiley face, kind of, I guess. And on the right, it looks like a backwards C. We'll get into that in just a few minutes here. Okay. Now, Kaf is the 11th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's the 11th letter. The Gematria, or number for Kaf is 20. Okay, because uh, once you get up to 10, it starts going the, the gematria, the number for the Hebrew uh, alphabet goes, starts going by 10s up until you get to 100. Uh, Kuf. Which we'll get to later. Kaf. So it's the number, it jumps up to the number 20. Now, what's 11? The 11th letter. 11 is the number of disorder and judgment. Okay, if you look in the Bible, you'll see 11 a lot in the scriptures. And, and be amazed at how much it shows disorder and judgment. And also, look at Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 and 19. For I testify unto you, Every man that hear the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man, any man, shall add unto these things which Yahweh shall add 
Yahweh shall add unto them, unto him, the plagues are written in this book. So it's telling you that any man adds to the scriptures. If any man decides to add an 11th commandment, Yahweh is going to add unto him the plagues which are written in this book. But it continues on the other end. If any man shall take away from the words of the prophecy of this book, of the, of the book of this prophecy, I'm sorry, Yahweh shall take away his part out of the book of life yes. and out of the holy city and from these things which are written in this book. So it says, it shows on the opposite end, if any man shall take away any, the words. Well, isn't that scary then? Yes. Because didn't we have someone who mistranslated our scripture? Yes. Yeah. And took away Name. His name. Yes. No, it took away, took something away, but added yes. to also. Isn't that scary? Yes, it is. I wouldn't want. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to take away something from the words of the prophecy of the book. Because I would don't want Yahweh to take my part out of the, my name out of the no. book of life. I'll go by what the word says. Yes, yes. I'm not going to add to or take away. I love Yahweh too much to do that. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Also, 11 is 10 plus 1. Now, in these, in, as in, in doing these Hebrew letters, we're going to become math, math professionals here because I did that once before with you. I know 11 is 10 plus 1. How about that? Thank you. Sister, you can go home and say, tell your husband, I learned today that 11 is 10 plus 1. He'll look at you like, yeah, didn't you already know that? What is 11? 11 is 10 plus 1. What do I mean? 11. On the left, you have the yod, which is 10 in the gematria. And of course, on the right, you have aleph, which... Pastor was speaking about earlier, which is the number, the uh, gematria, or the number for that one is one. So 10 plus one is 11. What does it mean? Yahweh, or the head, because we learned that, that Aleph, the first letter, is the head. Okay, when we, first, we did Aleph. The, yeah, Aleph is the head. Yahweh, or the head, brings the right hand power of the right hand power. So that's what that means. 11 and 10, 10 plus 1. Yahweh, the head, brings the right hand of power. The gematria for, uh, for Kaf is 20, which is the number of redemption. Okay? What is the picture? It looks like it's a smiling face, but actually it is an open hand. And there's great significance to the open hand in the scriptures. We see here a hand. This is actually, let me go back one. Oh, okay, I'll have it in the uh, modern Hebrew here. I should have put it in the modern Hebrew here. Well, you'll see in a second. This is... A hand, look at the way it's shaped. Everybody, put your hand up and shape it like that. Now watch Now watch the, the, the screen. Watch how it changes. You're showing a cough. A cough is just a backward C, an open hand. It's not the closed hand. It's the open hand. It's not the right hand or the closed hand, like the tenth letter, but it's the eleventh letter, Kaf. What is the eleventh letter? Let me jump ahead a little bit here. Let me see. Okay, the previous letter was Yod, the right hand power of Yahweh. So it's, it shouldn't surprise you that the next letter is Kaf, which is the letter of anointing. Yahweh will take that right hand of power, right hand power of Yahweh, and, and anoint you. 
You see, it's an open hand when the priest went to anoint somebody and laid their hand on them. It was an open hand. They didn't hit him with a fist on the top of the head. It was an open hand. A, se a senior person in an army, when they want to anoint somebody for a position, they put their hand out. They put they put their hand out like this. And that person say they will say they're six foot tall. What do they have to do? They have to kneel. They have to kneel because that guy's not gonna move his hand. That guy has to kneel to get the anointing, to get the promotion. And we're gonna get into that. The kneeling. Isn't it amazing? We see now why these two letters should have been done together. The right hand power Yahweh is the the next letter is the Kaf or the anointing. So it's the right hand power Yahweh that will anoint you. Let's give a couple of things about uh, the inform, uh, number 20 in the scriptures. Okay, 20 is the age, the age of becoming a soldier. And 20 is the number of anointing on the hand on the head. Kaf comes from the root word kafa. Everybody say kafa. Uh. Which means to bend down. Now you know why I was giving an example about having a handout and a guy has to bend down. It takes a bending of the knee. Didn't we, when we came to Yahweh, we have to bend the knee. We might, we might uh, have stood there and received, you know, the anointing of Yahweh and received the Holy Spirit when we were standing. But mentally, it takes a bending yes. of our knee. Yes. We not... <laughs> Are a bending, uh, okay, a bending of our knee, yes. a bending of our desires, our will. We have to bend down. We have to humble ourselves. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you, it takes a lot for a man, I'm going to speak as a man here, to humble himself, to bow down before his wife and say, honey, I did this. I made this mistake. And it cost us $800. Or to go to your boss and tell him, sir or ma'am, you know, I did this with the machine and it, it broke. You know, it started fizzling, crack, snap crackling and popping and, you know, start doing fireworks and I did it. It was my fault. I've had to do that. Although it didn't cost the company $800. Thank <laughs> you I mean, I didn't break it that much. Um, but it, take, it takes a bending of the knee, a bowing down. Humility. It's a humility. It, I mean, even with your children, you have to be able to bow down to your children. I mean, the, the scriptures say your children are supposed to be obedient to you, right? But you know what? You have to be able to bow down, even to your children. To say, son, daughter, I made a mistake with you. I did thus and thus. It's a humility. We need to be able to bow. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 23, verse 12, it says, whoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Interestingly, the word abased in the scripture 
and humble in this scripture. I can't really see the, the lines too well, but the lines both point the, the, the two different words, are based and humble. They're both, they both come from the same Greek word, tapinio, tapinio, which means to depress, figuratively, figuratively it means to humiliate, 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 and condition or heart. But I want to show that the word abased shall be abased, humble. And the he that is, shall humble himself shall be exalted. You see, when we abase ourselves or humble ourselves, we're going to be exalted. But if we try to lift ourselves up, we're going to be abased. We're going to be humble. Yes. The Hebrew word Hebrew number 6031, H in there is Hebrew. And the Hebrew word is all in all. It means to, I thought it was interesting, it means to depress, to, to humble oneself, to publicly humble another, i.e., to chastise them, to chastise somebody, to depress or to humble oneself. You see, it takes a bowing of the knee. You must be able to bow. I'll tell you what. I'd rather be able, I'd rather be more willing right now to bow my knee to Yahweh. Yes, yes. Right now. Yes, yes, yes. Before the cross, before the stake of Calvary. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then to have to bow my knee at the time of judgment. If I didn't bow now. It's a scary thing if we don't bow our knee to Yahweh now and humble ourselves before Him. Say, Yahweh, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. Yes, That one day we're gonna have to bow our knee. The Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Yes, that Yahweh. Adonai. Yahweh Hamashiach yes. is Adonai. I don't I don't I want to bow before him now before I bow before him yes. then. Yes. You know what? If we bow before him now, and we don't have to bow before him in judgment, of course we're probably in allness, we're probably gonna bow anyway. Oh, because of his greatness, his glory. His... We're going to bow in his presence. Yes. There's a song. I can't um, can't think of the name of the song. But, you know, it says that how we're going to, what, what am I going to do? Am I going to, when I'm in his presence, what am I going to do? What is that song, Sister Patty? I can only imagine. Ah, I can only imagine. I'm going to have to play that song at the end. Remind me. Yeah. I can only imagine. What I'm going to do at the end when I'm before Him. But it takes a bowing of the knee. I'll tell you what. If we bow our knee now. And we don't, we, we humble ourselves now. This is what will happen. It say, says in Matthew 25, verse 21. Of course, I cut some of the scripture out. But it says, he says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yes, yes. Enter into the joy of thy Adonai. I enter into the joy of Yahweh. That's what happens if we bow the knee now and not bow the knee in judgment. I don't know about you, but I want him to I want him to say to me. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yes. 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 Kaf is all about potential. Yes. All about potential. If you want the fullness of your potential, the full potential of your anointing, because remember, Kaf is all about anointing. If you want the full potential of your anointing, you need to understand suppression. 
And where are you going with that, Robin? Why are you saying suppression? What what does suppression have to do with cough and the potential of our anointing? We must learn to suppress our appetites. That's a big burger there. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Little mouth, but a big burger. We must learn to suppress our appetites. What is this? What is the point of fasting? You see, suppressing our appetites requires us to maybe fast. That's a four-letter word that a lot of us don't like. What's the point of fasting? What does it do for us? Well, we might lose a few pounds, like I need to lose a few pounds. <laughs> um, and, you know, Yahweh looks down on us and says, wow, my, my servant is fasting. So what's the point of fasting? The denying of self. That's what fasting is all about, is denying of self. It's the denying of self-desires. You know, fasting might not only, you know, we, we say fasting. When we talk about fasting normally, we're talking normally on, about food. But did you know, fasting might not always be talking about food. You know, we might be doing something that... Uh, you know, we're, that's taking us away from Yahweh. That's drawing us away from Yahweh. We, if if we like cars, I and fixing cars. I the only thing I like to do with the car is drive it. Um, and put gas in it, of course, so I can drive it. Um, the uh, okay. Cars. If we love cars, and we love to fix cars. We shouldn't allow that car to take the place of Yahweh. Amen. If we find ourselves spending too much time fixing a car and not spending as much time with, with Yahweh, then maybe we need to call up a fast. A fast from ours. Fixing cars. Now that sounds funny to say a fast from a, yeah fast from cars, but it could be anything, anything that is taking us taking us away from our walk with Yahweh. Fasting is all about denying self. Did you know this was an interesting little fact that I saw? Today, more than 95% of all chronic disease is called by, caused by food choice, toxic food ingredients, nutritional deficiencies, and lack of physical exercise. Like our Ronald McDonald there. <laughs> Interesting. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Check this out. This was really, really interesting when I read it. Then said Yahweh Messiah unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. First it takes a denying. First we have to to come after Yahweh. We have to go for Yahweh. We have to seek Yahweh. Then it takes a denying. A denying of what? A denying of self. Doing what our flesh wants us to do. Amen. I mean, our flesh wants us on a Saturday to go out, go out to the park and have a picnic. Or go down the shore and go swimming in the ocean. But that's not Yahweh's will. Yeah. We have to deny ourselves. Or maybe to stay home and fix the car. We have to take up our cross. 
and follow after him. The word deny there means to, de to deny utterly or disown. There's another word there, but I cannot read it. Another too big. Okay? De to deny utterly or to disown. You know, we have to disown what we want in this world to follow Yahweh. We have to give up everything to follow Yahweh. Amen. You know, we give up everything, Yahweh will give it back to us anyway. Amen. Yahweh is faithful. Yes, He is. Yahweh is totally faithful. To deny, to deny, it means to deny utterly. Denying oneself is both physical and spiritual in nature. Amen. How is that? Denying oneself in the physical is doing what the flesh... Denying oneself... Okay, I have this backwards. Denying oneself is both physical and spiritual in nature. Yes. Physical... In the physical means doing... Not... I should say not doing. Not doing. Not doing what the flesh wants to do. The physical wants to do what the flesh wants to do. I mean, let's be serious. Like, you know, sleep late on a, sa on a Sabbath. And not come to service. In the, in the spiritual, it's not doing what Yahweh wants us to do. That's the, we have to deny ourselves. We have to not do what the flesh wants to do. Amen. We have to do what Yahweh wants us to do in the spiritual. And of course, we have Satan who fights us every step of the way yes. with both of those. In the flesh and in the spirit. Amen. It's a bowing of the knee, the denying of oneself, of yourself, that brings you to the fullness of your anointing. Bowing, a bowing of the knee before Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh Messiah. Yes. Once you suppress, what do you do? You do this. Kavanah. Everybody say Kavanah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I didn't hit the key there, but anyway. It means to intently concentrate spiritually when doing a mitzvah or a commandment. That's what kavanah means in the Hebrew. And we see it's a... Um, Sister Patty, I'm drawing a blank here, the letters, right to left, for some reason. Oh, that's a wah, a noon, and a hay. Wa, noon, and hey. I don't know why. I, I just, I'm looking at them and I've done this study so much and I, I just drew a complete blank there. Kavanaugh. There's, there's two letters that look the same. Yeah, that's a noon. The top is more rounded. Yeah, the cough is more rounded. That's a more rounded shoe. I, they look a lot alike. Yes. So once you suppress, you have a Kavanaugh. To intensely concentrate spiritually when doing a mitzvah or a commandment. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. It says, Wherefore, Yahweh said, For as much as his people draw near to me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of man. Did you catch that? Let me read that again. Wherefore, Yahweh said, For as much as his people draw near with me, Near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. And their fear toward me, toward Yahweh, is taught by the precept of man. Now I didn't add anything to that scripture. That's straight out of, your, out of the scriptures in Isaiah 29, verse 13. Interesting. Talk, talks about how we draw near to Yahweh with our mouth. We, 
we we might say we love Yahweh. And we with our lips we honor him. But it's scary. Some people their heart is removed far from him. They might say they love him, but their heart is far from him. And their fear, catch this, this was interesting. Their fear toward me is taught by the precept of man. What their the fear, their fear of Yahweh, their respect. Fear there doesn't mean you know being scared of them. It means respect or honor uh, Yahweh. Their fear or their respect or their reverence toward Yahweh is taught by the precept of man. In other words, what it's saying is, people out there, they're taught to, they're taught by man of man behind the pulpit to fear Yahweh. Or, or when they would say God or the Lord they, they teach the precepts of, of man or taught to fear Yahweh Amen. instead of Yahweh teaching us Isaiah chapter 49 verse 16 if you have your scriptures open and you have a highlighter this scripture here should be highlighted. I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm not saying, you know, go grab a highlighter and highlight it. It's a suggestion. I'm, I'm just... What do I do with my scriptures? If I see, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm reading or someone is teaching and I see something that looks like a common scripture or a scripture that's good, what I do is I'll put a little P next to it. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 16 in my, my Bible at home. I have this at P next to this here. Behold and graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy, thy walls are continually before me. Isn't it interesting? We've been talking about the letter Kaf. And how is the open hand and he says here that, Yahweh says here that, I can hold, I've graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Each and every one of us, our names are graven upon Lord. his palm of his hand. Yes. That's a lot. That's some pretty, pretty big palms with all the people who have been out throughout the world. Yes. But what it's saying is, he knows us. Yes. yes. Amen. He said the very hairs of your head are numbered. He, do you know, he, he, it says he knows all the stars and he knows them by name. Yes, yes. He knows each star in the sky by name. Yes. What, what, how hard is it for him to know each one of us? I thank Yahweh today that Yahweh knows us. Yes, yes. And Yahweh knows me. Yes. And I'm not just a little speck with a white piece of paper. In this world, I'm a speck on a white piece of paper. According to the world, all the people in the world, and my in my importance in the world, I'm by the speck. But I'm engraved in the, upon the palms of his hands. My walls are continually before him. Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 41. Let us lift up a heart with our hands unto Yahweh in the heavens. We not only should lift up our hearts to Yahweh, we should lift up our hands. Yeah. I could probably give a, probably a dozen more scriptures about raising our hands to Yahweh. But we not only need, need to raise our hearts, but our hands to Yahweh. Amen. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 20. This is speaking about the uh, virtuous woman here. She says, she stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she stretch, reaches forth her hands to the needy. She stretches out her hand to the poor. 
Here's some cough words. I want you to, to yes. I don't know if you mind. You know, you read um, Isaiah 49, 16. Uh -huh. Would you mind if I read the scripture before it? No, go ahead. Read, read them both together. It says, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. Mm -hmm. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continuing before me. I wasn't adding anything to what you're saying, but you made it so more personable, like a mother's not going to forget her child. Okay? Right. And he's, or he says, Surely they may forget. Yeah, he said, I'll never forget you. Wow, that His is mother awesome. mother may forget, but a child, but he said, you'll never forget you. will never forget us. <laughs> mother might forget us, but y'all will never forget us. Thank you, Sister Bedell, for that. I'll be in my No, not at all. Some interesting cough words. Catch, all the, catch the, the significance of these words and how they interact with each other. Whoops, wrong key, wrong direction. Kessel. Everybody say Kessel. Kessel. Means throne. Keter. 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 Means crown. Kavu. Oh. Means glory. Kanaf. Means wing. Kafar, Kafar. Kafar. means cover. And finally, cherub, which is cherub. cherub. Do you see the, 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 inter, the intertwining of these scriptures, the no, scriptures, words, these Hebrew words here? They're all, they all begin with kaf, throne, a crown. Yahweh is thrown with the crown on his head. The glory of Yahweh. Yes. He covers us by his wings. Yes. We're going to look at that in just a second. Kafar covers. He covers. And the cherub. The cherubs. You see, in the Old Testament, in the in the uh, holy of holies. They had, okay, they had the Holy of Holies, they had the Ark of the Covenant. And on top of the Ark of the Covenant was the Mercy Seat. Oh, how I want to go back into, in the future, going into teaching about the Tabernacle again. I want to re revisit, I know I keep saying it, but I want to revisit that study. Yahweh keeps impressing me to revisit that study I did. Not that I, I was great, the study wasn't great, but Yahweh wants us to look at it one more time. On top of that, on, on the uh, Ark of the Covenant, on the top, on the mercy seat, you had the throne, you had the crown, you had the glory of Yahweh coming forth. And the wings of the cherub cover the Ark of the Covenant. They touch each other. We're going to see that in just a second. Kissel, which is throne. It's another way of saying throne. Another Hebrew word. Kiss, everybody say Kissel. Kissel. Or, I'm sorry, Kissy, not Kissel. Kissy. I don't know where I'm seeing an L there. It's Kissy, not Kissel. Kissy. That should be an easy one to remember in the future when we see the word thrown in the scripture. Kissy, kissy. <laughs> kissy, kissy, yeah. 52%, interestingly, 52% of all thrones found in the, in the 12 historical books of the Bible are found in 1 Kings, which happens to be the 11th or the Kaf book, which happens to be the 11th book of the scriptures. Isn't that interesting? 52% of all the thrones in the, in the scriptures, in the historical books, or in the 11th book, or the Kaf book, which is 1 Kings. 
What is this here? Okay, I've been studying, I've been teaching here for about 45 minutes. Cough. Cough. Thank you. It's cough. <laughs> Actually, that's a, what they call a daggish in between, in the, in the middle of it there. A daggish. A daggish. Okay. Okay, one, that's one cough with the daggish in the middle. The daggish we're not getting into right now. Yes, it's gematria number is 20. Whoops, it just moved over on us, didn't it? Now, I'm going to show you something. I want you to imagine on a blueprint, you're looking down at a blueprint. It's two cops together. But if I had them together, all the way together, touching each other, what would it look like? Thanks. It would look like the Ark of the Covenant. Oh. The Ark of the Covenant. The mercy seat of Yahweh. The mercy seat of Yahweh is the two cops. The two cops facing each other represent the Holy of Holies. The cover and touch each other. Okay? The Holy of Holies, like I said, the two cherubs, if you look at the two cherubs, we're going to look at a picture in just a moment of it. The cherubs and the wing, the wings of the cherubs. The cherubs, actually, not cherubs. I, I say cherubs, out of, it's the English pronunciation, but it's actually in the Hebrew, the CH is pronounced like a, a hard H-H, so cherubs. The her cherubs, like I used to say it like that. As our, in our English, it's not normal to speak like that. Okay? The two cops facing each other represents the Holy of Holies. And the, the two cherubs on, a, on the mercy seat, the wings touch each other. And Yahweh put it like that purposely. That represents the hand of Yahweh is anointing. Doesn't it say we're anointed to preach the gospel? I mean, it doesn't say that, but we're anointed to preach the gospel to every creature. Yahweh has given us the power, the anointing, to preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Amen. To go out and spread the word. The Herods are in the letter Kaf. We saw the, the, the Hebrew word for it. This is a picture of the uh, Ark of the Covenant. And you see on top uh, the two cherubs, the two cherubs on top. The wings are touching each other. And you see the glory, the brightness in the middle, which is the glory of Yahweh. Kavod. Yes, the Kavod. Okay, the, and uh, you see the poles and everything, which we're not getting into right now, but. We, the, my point with showing you this was how, how the two the two cherubs, the wings are touching each other, and Yahweh told them when they made this for it to be like that, and they're, all that there is made with gold. And of course, we know inside that the, the um, Ark of the Covenant is uh, the the rod of budding, the, the Ten Commandments, and um, the manna. Thank you. Through a blank again. The, the manna. We're going to end with here. We're going to show some more cough words. Ko. Everybody said ko. Oh, okay. Means thus, so, as, or like. Kai. Kai. Means for, for or because. These are getting all kinds of Hebrew words. Getting into all kinds of Hebrew words, huh? Yes. Ken. Okay. Or Ke I'm sorry, not Ken, it's Keen. Keen. Yeah, Keen. Keen. It sounds, it's pronounced with one E, but it's actually pronounced like, it's, said, it's spelled with one E, but it's actually pronounced with two. It's Keen. It means so, right, surely, 
all, or everything. Kalah. Kalah. Means completion or end. So this is the Kalah. Yeah, we're just about one word and we're at the, the Kalah. Yeah, very cute. Can I give me a hint there, are you? <laughs> we want more, we want more. Oh, I wish I could. You know, it, it would be wonderful if we could sit down and, we, and go straight through the whole Bible, the whole Hebrew alphabet in one teaching. Whoa. I, know, I, I know that would be like days, and I'd be like... <laughs> I mean, it'd be dead breaks and stuff, but... The day will be as a thousand years. <laughs> yeah. But because... From the beginning to the end, from the Aleph to the Tav. Let me tell you what the Tav is. Everybody know what the Tav is? The Tav is the stake or the cross. It means covenant. And we'll get to that at the very end. Tav means covenant. So we see the Kala, Kala is completion or end. Do you know another word for Kala? Another kala, what another word, what another meaning for it is? Bride. Isn't that interesting? The completion, the completion or the end is when we are his bride. We're presented as his bride, as the scriptures say, spotless. Spotless before him. Kala or bride. So we see how how important the word kaf is. It's an open hand, anointing. Yahweh wants to anoint each and every one of us. Yes. Yeah. Anoint our minds with his word. Yeah. Anoint our, our ears to hear what he says. Yeah. We can't be like other people out there. I'm not I there's people out there that have e eyes and do not see. Yeah. And have ears and cannot hear. Yeah. I want to have eyes to see and ears to hear what yes. Yahweh says for me. Yes. I I want to be able to be able to preach his word. Yes. The instant in season and now the season. The Bible says, yes. "Be ready every." Yes. You know, I can't exactly quote the scripture, but he says, "Be ready to give an answer to everyone who asks." Us as the hope that lies within you, with fear and trembling. We need to be able to be ready to give y'all give them hope. Yes. This is a hopeless world. Yes, it is. Amen. Oh, there's no hope in this. And y'all has anointed us. Yahweh yeah. has anointed us when we receive the yes. baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Sister, you're going to receive it. Yes, yes, yes. You're going to receive it. Yes. It's promised. It's promised. It's promised. The scriptures don't lie. The scriptures do not lie. Amen, amen. He says, do I lie? He doesn't lie. He says in his word, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Amen, amen, yes. So it's all about anointing. It's all about Yahweh's anointing on us. Yes, Father. In the Old Testament, whenever they had a new king, what did they do? They anointed him. They anointed him. He was anointed. Oh, hallelujah. They bowed down. And, yes, you're right, and they bowed down. Yes. They yes. bowed down before the person who was anointing him. Yes. Dave, I think David, David bowed down when he was anointed. Yup. It takes a bowing down, a bowing of the knee. I thank Yahweh that I bowed my knee to Yahweh. Thank you. Oh, I bowed my knee. Hallelujah. And Yahweh's anointed me to preach His word. Amen. Glory, glory. No glory to me. I can't teach. I'm not. I'm not great. I don't have a, a building that has ten thousand people in it and fifty thousand online. And I thank Yahweh for the knowledge that He's given me. Yes, yes. A little bit here and a little bit there. Yes. And I thank Yahweh for His, his 
opening his, my mind to his Hebrew words, his Hebrew alphabet. Because it's the alphabet. The whole universe was created on the Hebrew alphabet. In the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth. Amen. The, the Aleph and the, I mean, the, 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 he, everything was created with the Hebrew Aleph faith. It's amazing. If we could go through the whole Hebrew Aleph faith in one teaching, we'd be amazed how one letter leads into the next. We've seen how Yod, the right hand power of Yahweh, leads into the anointing. And we've went through, from, or we start from Aleph, and we've seen it. I, I didn't go through it all today, but we've seen how one letter leads to another. Dear listeners, thank you for watching this message. We are now close to the end of an age. It is essential for this true gospel to reach the four corners of the earth before the end comes. Please share, share, share this message however you can so more souls can be saved before time runs out. Thank you for watching.